Frank, you're up. <laughs> Is this working? Yes? Yep. Okay. Okay, very good. Uh, okay. Uh, let me just go right ahead here. There. Okay, I'm going to talk about engineering standards. I'm going to do it in different contexts. I'm not going to talk so much about materials. Uh, one of the big contexts, which someone brought up earlier, is expectations uh, and uh, communications, interoperability, etc. When I get a screw, I want those threads to fit the appropriate nut, etc. But I'm not going to deal with that. I'm going to deal uh, more with how standards deal with failures, and let's see what I have. Okay, a little bit of my background. Uh, let's see, which was the button for the pointer? Uh, let's see, this top one here. Okay, there. Okay, uh, I do a lot of robotics. That, for example, is a processed uh, uh, image looking at the front of the vehicle. How about standards for uh, AGVs, autonomous vehicles and stuff coming up? Uh, that's, uh, I think that's probably driving around Cleveland Heights somewhere, and we're looking at, for example, the lane markers, et cetera, to figure out how to drive the vehicle. And by the way, we had a person in the car at the time. It was actually a van. Uh, there's one of our lawnmower robots. That's a fairly early one. Uh, and that, I think, is running around in the football field out there. I do optical sensors. Uh, that's actually a torque sensor that's actually being developed by Rockwell right now to put on Navy ship shafts for their drives. Uh, and I do little things like embedded systems and stuff like that. Uh, and a lot of RF. Okay. Uh, I'm going to concentrate on the teaching side of things. These are some of the things that I teach, but the big things I wanted to point out is where we bring standards in, uh, at least into the stuff I do. Uh, freshman course, the engineering of things. Senior capstone, we heard a discussion about that. That's a great place, and the accreditation people want us to bring standards into the design process, okay? Uh, and that means that the students need to understand the standards. And that gets us into electromagnetic fields, another thing that I teach. Uh, wireless would get into interoperability and expectations of communications. Uh, so, where do I use standards? Design, especially uh, the FCC Part 15, which we're incorporating into our senior project. And I do a lot of forensic analysis. When something breaks, people call me to figure out why did it not work. Uh, I've got a few things listed up there. I've used a lot of UL standards over the years, the National Electrical Code, OSHA, uh, the, uh, I said IEC, I should have said IES, okay. Uh, consumer electronics and equipment. Uh, drip coffee makers. I'm one of the world experts on deep fat fryers for fast food. Okay, I know the secret codes to operate everything at Burger King and McDonald's. Okay, uh, fluorescent lighting, Coke cars, industrial heating, electrical distribution, not so much transmission, everything below 66 kilovolts. Uh, laser systems, ladder logic, hardware failures. Uh, there's a lot of stuff out there, and part of our responsibilities, and I heard it earlier, is the protection of the public. There's an awful lot of that in our standards, and we particularly in the training of all engineering students need to be aware of those. Okay, where do we have it in our EE curriculum? Some of it is very overt, and some of it is very subtle. Okay, 210. It all, that's our first circuits course. It depends on who teaches it. But I do get into stuff equivalent or related to the National Electrical Code. Conductors, conductor losses, wire heating, okay. 
I even do an overview of the entire distribution and transmission system down to the grounding in the outlet in your home. There's a lot of standards the whole way along that. Uh, ampacity, power, all of that is relevant to understanding a lot of the codes and standards. Uh, as an electrical engineer, particularly interested in FCC Part 15, there's an awful lot of things that have to deal with that. Uh, that means our students need to know and our graduates need to know about radiation, electromagnetic waves, shielding, antennas. You have to know an awful lot just to even make the measurements. Okay. Ah, uh, senior project. We're working on a, I see Thomas is here. Uh, this is a preview of some of the lectures coming up in a couple weeks, okay? Uh, one lecture, follow-up and student reports, et cetera. Uh, and some of these are actually slides used at other schools. I believe this one is from Michigan. Standards, codes, specifications, and technical regulations. There's an awful lot of stuff out there. And what's the difference, okay? This is an interesting slide. How can we relate all of these standards, rules, and regulations to aspects of electrical engineering? Great matrix slide. This one again from Michigan. Home entertainment, industrial applications, instrumentation, wiring and cables. And we even have AAMI down there listed on the bottom. Uh, in the other, uh, we've got appliances, communications. We've got, I think, everyone that's here featured and a whole lot of other people. Uh, some of the big part of education is to know what's relevant to you. Uh, sometimes that's the old person at the company. I told them about George in the freshman class. Uh, sorry, that was the senior project class. Go to the person who knows everything in the organization. Talk to them. Uh, here's a great example. Thomas, this might be a homework assignment for you. <laughs> this is a standard Dell keyboard. Did you ever look at what's on the bottom of it? What is relevant? What aspect of each of those is relevant to the design of that keyboard? Just knowing what's relevant can be really valuable to get a start. Okay. Uh, just even, and we heard something earlier that I thought applied. You have to do your standards in context. When do they apply? Uh, this is actually interesting. I've done an awful lot of work with coffee makers. Uh, and there are standards for commercial use and for residential use. And they're different. And where do you apply it? Sometimes the same thing, but applied in different, or used in different areas, has different relevant standards. You've got to think of the use. Okay? And what Keurig says is that if you use a personal one, like I know that many people have their uh, K-cup coffee makers in their office, uh, Keurig will not support uh, any warranty on that and says specifically, you may be liable for property damages or personal injury resulting from the improper use of that product. Do you have one in your office, John? Not anymore. Okay. <laughs> uh, and that's it. 